Hi everyone, this is Ms. Leia and in this video, we're going to talk about uniformly accelerated motion. For our learning targets, we have to be able to describe a body in a state of UAM as well as to get introduced with the kinematic equations. And then first, of course, we have to define what acceleration is since we're talking about uniformly accelerated motion. So all that you have to know is acceleration is the rate at which an object changes its velocity. So in other terms, it's just a description of how fast something speeds up or how fast something slows down. Okay. And in equation form, it's simply the change in velocity divided by time or just to chunk this equation down further, it's like final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time that the change in velocity took place, okay? So uh, when you say uniformly accelerated motion, from the term uniform, meaning to say constant or the same all throughout, it's simply a state of motion where an, a moving object changes the magnitude of its velocity at a constant rate. But to illustrate that further, let's look at the scenario where we have a car here and then it moves from point a to point e in the state of uam okay so how do you visualize uniformly accelerated motion to do that we're going to analyze the motion of this car upper per one second interval based on this scenario okay so if you go take a look at zero zero second to one second we can see that the car's velocity changes from zero meters per second up to five meters per second which means to say that it gains five meters per second within a one second time interval and if you look at point a to point b the car's motion changes from five meters per second to 10 meters per second which means to say that once again it speeds up by 5 meters per second within one second because 10 minus 5 is 5, right? So that's a 5 meter per second gain within a one second interval. Going forward from point B to point C, we can see that it speeds up from 10 to 15 meters per second. So that's another 5 meter per second gain within a one second time interval, okay? So going forward from point c to point d it once again speeds up by five meters per second because from 15 the velocity becomes 20 meters per second eastward okay and that also happens within a one second time interval and lastly from point d to point e we can also notice that it speeds up from 20 meters per second to 25 meters per second so that's another five meters per second increase in speed or velocity magnitude within one second okay so what can we deduce from there the magnitude of velocity increases by five meters per second every second based on the data that we know about this car's motion in other terms the acceleration of the car is constant at five meters per second per second or five meters per second squared okay so why did we say so simply because within those one second time intervals the change in velocity was always five meters per second okay so the acceleration is five meters per second per second okay that's what uam is okay when you say uniformly accelerated motion it's just a state of motion where the object changes the magnitude of its velocity at a constant rate okay now take note that that could be the other way around meaning to say it could be slowing down for example by five meters per second every second okay so what matters is that the change in the magnitude of the velocity is constant whether it's increasing or de or decreasing going forward i'd like to debunk some misconceptions about uam and the first one is a common misconception among students based on my experience as a teacher a body in UAM has constant velocity. Okay, now this is obviously wrong. And I think that the reason behind this misconception is because of the word uniform in UAM. Okay, but take note that what's uniform is the acceleration, not the velocity. Okay, so it's not wrong that the velocity is constant. In fact, it is changing in UAM, right? The velocity is either increasing or decreasing. So this is wrong. Okay, the velocity is not constant. It's the acceleration, which is constant. Second misconception, a body in UAM has changing acceleration. And that's another wrong concept. I think that because of the idea of change behind acceleration, there is this misconception. But 
take note that the acceleration does not change. Just take it from the term itself. It says uniformly uh, accelerated motion. So the acceleration is uniform, okay? The changing quantity is the velocity. But because the change in velocity is constant, then the acceleration is said to be uniform, okay? So that's not correct, okay? So the acceleration of a body in UAM is uniform because the velocity is changing, but the change in the velocity happens at a constant rate. I hope that's clear, okay? Now take note that the car example earlier just shows us a horizontal example of UAM, but take note that, of course, UAM can also happen along the vertical axis. And uh, it could be of different uh, possible scenario. Example, a rocket ship that's being launched, for example. Okay, it could be an UAM, right, along the vertical. But a common case of UAM along the vertical axis that we're going to focus on is the state of freely falling bodies, okay, or what we call as free fall state, okay? And when you say freely falling bodies, uh, they're, they're in that particular state because the effects of the air on the object can be neglected, Okay, let's say, for example, there's an open sheet or wad of paper and you allow it to fall downwards. Of course, you expect that sheet of paper to be swaying left and right until it hits the ground, right? So that's not in free fall. But if you crumple that piece of paper and you allow it to drop, it will actually go straight down. It will not mind air resistance that much, okay? And yeah, it will not be affected significantly unlike the open sheet of paper, right? So what you can consider as freely falling body would be the crumpled paper, but not the, the one that's uh, widely open or widely spread, okay? So another way of describing freely falling bodies is that the sole influence in their motion is simply gravity. Once again, because uh, of the neg neg negligible effects of air resistance onto them, and then because gravity is the sole influence in freely falling bodies motion, we expect the acceleration to be constant, okay? And for freely falling bodies on Earth, that acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward, okay? Or negative 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? And that's constant for objects that are freely falling here on Earth, of course. Uh, it's a different story if you talk about objects drop in some other celestial bodies, of course. Okay, so the 9.8 meters per second squared gravitational acceleration value is only for those objects that are on Earth. And then just a visualization of that, similar to the car illustration earlier, uh, if you drop, for example, a ball from a certain height, let's say on this cliff, for example, down this cliff, uh, we can see in this illustration that it actually changes its velocity at a definite rate, okay? So in short, it's in UAM, okay? Freely falling bodies are in UAM, but it happens along the vertical axis, okay? Uh, now, for simplicity, instead of using 9.8 meters per second per second, we're going to use 10 as our multiple so that it's easier to visualize how constant the change in velocity is. So if you go take a look at this closely, every one second time interval, the velocity increases by 10 meters per second. Right, So the acceleration of freely falling bodies is, is approximately 10 meters per second squared or 10 meters per second every second. Okay, Take note that in calculations, we're going to use 9.8 just to make our answers more accurate. And then if you graph the data that you can obtain for a freely falling body, we expect that to look something like this. So you can see a straight line sloping upward in the velocity versus time graph simply because the change or the increase in the velocity of the object is constant, okay? So the slope is also constant. The change in the velocity per unit time is always 10 meters per second every second, okay? So going forward... Now, the next question that's worth pondering on is, is it convenient to study about UAM when the discussion is about accelerating bodies? The answer is yes, simply because uh, things or even human beings actually have a certain ability to accelerate. Let's say, for example, cars, for example, they're engineered to accelerate at a certain rate, and that's indicated or determined by their power rating. So those cars with higher power rating, for example, can accelerate faster than those cars with lower power rating. Say, for example, sports car. 
sports cars because they have um, aircraft engines. They can accelerate as fast as 10 up to 12 meters per second squared around those values Okay, because uh, they're designed for racing purposes, for example, or if not for racing, just for those people who really want to speed up along the high along the highway. Okay. And then for ordinary cars, they can only accelerate as fast as around three up to like approximately five meters per second squared, unlike sports cars, because ordinary cars are just designed, of course, for uh, everyday purposes like transportation, not uh, like sports cars that really have to accelerate really quick. So yeah, it depends on the car's purpose. Okay. So cars are engineered for a certain purpose, therefore their engines give them a specific rate of acceleration okay so if you purchase a car it has also a certain acceleration value as determined by its power rating okay but we're not gonna go into the math behind that the same thing goes with human beings of course humans don't accelerate at the same rate there are some people who can accelerate faster than the others especially athletes who uh, who have running as their sport for example we expect them to be really quick in terms of accelerating and of course that ability to accelerate varies from one person to another because we have we have undergone different trainings different experiences we also have unique uh, natural capabilities and there are also certain people who are naturally agile they move really quick and yeah once again their training also has something to do with their ability to accelerate but the next question is this how about bodies that don't accelerate uniformly i mean yeah um it's okay to study about uam because it's a common case among objects among cars people etc but what about bodies that don't accelerate uniformly we're not going to delve deeper, we're not going to discuss them at all because for senior high school curriculum, that's not really supposed to be discussed yet. Of course, if you encounter higher physics subjects in the future, you might encounter about bodies that don't accelerate uniformly and work on the more complicated math behind these objects, okay? So for our senior high school um, purposes or goals rather, we would just focus on uniformly accelerated motion. And of course, uh, I, I also want you to get some takeaway from there. I, I want you to always remember that you don't have to compare your acceleration rate to that of other people because you are unique. You have a certain ability. You have a certain purpose in life. And what's important, I think, is that you have to keep on pushing forward no matter what your acceleration value is so that you can get to the destination where God wants you to be in God's perfect timing. <laughs> That's all for this video. I hope that that has been helpful. Have a great day.